our next section of notes in the nation divides in two unit is when the nation actually divides in two. We're going to look at the different reasons that finally the South seceded or um, separated from the North. So first of all, uh, slavery was the first cause of the Civil War. Slavery caused bitter, bitter feelings between the North and the South that we have covered. The North believed that it was that slavery was morally wrong and did not want to spread slavery to new states and new territories. The South required slavery for their agriculture or for agriculture and their economy. The South wanted to expand slavery. And so there was a lot of land being added to the nation. The Mexican War added a large chunk of land in down in the South where Texas is today. Um, and southern people wanted slavery to be allowed, but northern people did not want slavery. And it was below the um, the Missouri Compromise line, the 3830 line, and so southerners believed it should be a slave area, northerners believed it shouldn't. And a new political party emerged in the United States called the Free Soilers. They demanded an end to slavery in all states, and in 1848, 13 free soiler candidates won seats in Congress. And this made the South really nervous because if, they are, if there are free soilers being elected, they are radically against slavery and they are aggressive. Well, slavery now may be weakened. So over here on the right, you can see this map. Of, um, and you have to kind of imagine it in the top left corner. But there were three big events that added land to the nation. In the 1840s, land was added from the Texas Annexation and the Mexican War. And the question was, as always is, do we allow slavery in this new land that was not part of the Missouri Compromise and, and the, uh, the Louisiana Purchase? So all this area. Second, the Texas War of Independence. This was land that we took from Mexico in the early 1840s. And then the Mexican Cession Land. This was land that the U.S. won from Mexico when the U.S. defeated Mexico in the Mexican War um, in the mid-1840s and early 1850s. So all of this was taken from Mexico. And then the question is, do we allow slavery or not? Uh, number two, so cause number two is that during the mid-1800s, political power began to shift away from the southern states. In 1848, there were 15 slave states and 15 free states, but what really got people nervous was that, yes, in the Senate, the, uh, there are equal slave and free states, but in the House, the northern states began to have more power than the southern states because the northern states' population was growing faster than the population in the south. Um, so there's this growth in political power in the North. The South starts to see that, oh boy, the North is going to start to influence us and start to make laws against slavery or limiting slavery. Um, and you can see here the population of the country. 31 million people, but 71% of them are in the North. So by the 1850s, the North had more political power in Congress due to a larger population and more free states. This worried the South. Number three, cause three, California entered the Union, and um, they wanted to be they wanted to enter as a free state, and so this would upset the balance of power. So the South again sees ugh, the free states. All these people want to end our way of life. They want to end the Southern way and end slavery. Now in uh, 1850 there was a compromise. This, the Compromise of 1850 was vital in, number one, putting off the Civil War, but number two, causing the Civil War. So first of all, Henry Clay proposed a compromise to settle the tension between the North and the South. The Compromise of 1850 settled the issue of slavery in the land won from Mexico. First of all, California would be able to enter as a free state, but the rest of the land would be divided into Utah and New Mexico territory. And then the question of slavery was left to the people living in that area. So if there were more people that supported slavery in this territory, then they would become a slave state or a slave territory. If there were more free, then, the, then it would become a free territory. Now this opened it up to all kinds of problems because voting is never really fair. 
and there were different ways that people, especially these slave state supporters, um, ways that they could get their voice heard. Um, now, finally, the Compromise of 1850 caused a lot of problems um, with the Fugitive Slave Law. It was a part of this compromise passed, and it, it really created a lot of tension between the North and the South. Uh, number five, the fifth cause for the separation here, the secession of the South, was the creation of the Republican Party. Now, many Northern people who were opposed to slavery broke away from political parties, and they created a new political party called the Republican Party. So they broke away from the Democratic Party, created the Republican Party, because their main issue was slavery and how to deal with it. They want to stop it from spreading. And not every Democrat believed in that. And so the Republic, these future Republicans felt like, ugh, we need our own party that can deal with this issue of slavery. So the Republican Party began to gain more and more power in the U.S. government during the 1850s. So there's a political side of this. <clears throat> the North is getting more power than the South. Now there's this Republican Party that's going to start controlling the government. Ugh. So that's bad for the South. Good for the North, though. Um, now, number six, cause six for the Civil War, the Dred Scott decision. In 1857, a case went before the Supreme Court. A doctor in the U.S. Army was sent from his home in Missouri to live in the free state of Minnesota. He took his slave, Dred Scott, with him. That's his name, Dred Scott. Nice, right? Uh, later, the doctor and Dred returned home. Now, abolitionists said that the taking of a slave from a slave state to a free state automatically freed that slave, but the case went to the Supreme Court because they, they didn't agree with that. So the Dred, uh, Dred Scott was a slave whose owner moved to a free state. They later returned to a slave state. Dred Scott sued for his freedom, saying that he had become a free person when he was living in a free state. But the Supreme Court ruled against Dred Scott, and said these three things. Number one, slaves do not have the rights of citizens. Wherever you live, slave, you are not a citizen. You don't have any rights, or the rights of citizens. Number two, slaves were property, and they could be taken to a free state or anywhere without gaining their freedom. Hmm, interesting. Number three, the Missouri Compromise of 1820 was unconstitutional and Congress could not forbid slavery in any part of the territories. So that was like a huge blow to the North because they had been sneaking slaves out of the South and into the North to gain their freedom. They have been betting on and relying on the Missouri Compromise of 1820 to keep uh, slavery out of the northern sections of the Louisiana Territory. There was This was a total shocker to the North. So the South was very happy with this decision because it allowed for the extension of slavery and it protected slavery. It made it so that it was it was fine for people, slaves, to escape to the north, but then they could just be carried back south, and they would be slaves. And, um, so, and that's part of the Fugitive Slave Act. But also, so slaves could be transported around the nation and still remain slaves. And then the Missouri Compromise, that was the big problem. Now, what happens with slavery in all of these areas? Well, it can spread there. So... Um, all of these events, you know, are, are leading to war. Let's see more events. So during the 1850s, events took place that drove the North and South closer to war. Number one, the Northerners, they just defy the Fugitive Slave Law. And we're going to see the Fugitive Slave Law in a CRQ. But it said, if a slave is brought north or escapes north, whoever is around that slave is required to return it that slave. And if they do not, they get in trouble, they get fined, they get beaten, they get arrested, whatever. Um, and so it made everybody required to be a slave catcher. And that went against the feelings of most northern people, most abolitionists especially. Uh, so the northerners defy the fugitive slave law. The south asks the government to make the north follow it. And so whenever the government makes anybody do anything, there's a problem. Number two, northern writers write about the evils of slavery. And so we see that with, um, with 
the uh, Uncle Tom's Cabin by Harriet Beecher Stowe, so it turns people against slavery even more. And the events of the 1850s really drove a wedge between the people of the North and those in the South. They started to see each other as evil, awful. The North wants to destroy the South's way of life. The South wants to just abuse their slaves. It was very awful. So, a, the, a total divide. And um, 18, in 1860, many people believed that the presidential election in 1860 would really decide the fate of the United States. And so let's see the, who, the, the, four, pe well, the four people that are running. John Breckinridge, he's a Democrat from the South, so he's in support of slavery. Uh, Stephen Douglas, Democrat from the North. Even though he's from the North, he's a Democrat, so he doesn't want to touch slavery. John Bell, he's the Constitutional Union Party. He's kind of out there, and we don't know much about him here in this course. Abraham Lincoln, he's in the Republican Party, so he's openly against slavery. Now, Lincoln won, and he became the 16th president because the South, they didn't vote for him at all. They spread their votes among the other three candidates, and so Lincoln won the majority. And as soon as he won, well, let's see what this says here. Um, he didn't want to see slavery extend into all of these Western territories. And while he didn't want to end slavery, he didn't want it to spread. And he also was very elusive. He said that he, he wanted to leave it alone in the states where it already existed, but the last 40 years have shown that that's just not going to happen. It wasn't going to happen. So... Here's the election results. You can see that Lincoln won all of those blue pieces of land there. Those are all the Republican-controlled areas. You can see the split between the North and the South. They're totally at odds now, and Lincoln clearly won the popular vote. He won the, the electoral votes that he needed, the majority, and um, he goes on to become the president in 1860. So we're going to see what happens after he got elected next time. Stick with us.